What's up, everybody? Today we're discussing Dragon Ball Super, episode 65. All of our thoughts, feelings, likes, and dislikes. And with me here is... Daniel. And uh, so what are your thoughts on the episode in general? So, as is horrible with the internet, a majority of it, you know, as soon as I went online to do anything on YouTube was, hey, here's all the spoilers. You know, spoilers, Vegito. Not this episode, though, but everyone's using the thumbnail for Vegito. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so uh, that's a thing, and it's obviously super, so it's not even like people's thoughts or ideas about it. So the whole time I was watching this episode, I kept waiting for Vegito, only to see him in the preview for the next episode. Exactly. So it was kind of like, as cool as this episode was, and it should have meant so much more, because there was a lot of cool fights, a lot of cool stuff happened, but mm -hmm. the whole time I just kept kind of sitting around going, that's cool, when's Vegito coming? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Like I, I, I got it ruined for me too, and I'm like, it's probably the next episode preview, isn't it? Because it was the same with uh, Zamasu's fusion. I was like, oh, that's gonna happen in this episode. Nope. Oh no, no, no! Because that one they even teased in the preview for the next episode, and it was like, next episode he's gonna fuse, Psych. and then next episode, it's 23 minutes long. Minute 22, he's gonna fuse. <laughs> And literally the same shots that were in the next episode preview are the only shots in the episode. So I, I think somebody needs to help Dragon Ball Super figure out what preview means. Really what anything means, I think. <laughs> but th there was a lot of cool stuff that I really liked. Yeah. So I, th I thought it was a good episode, and I actually enjoyed the fight scenes. Yeah, the fight scenes were definitely cool. Uh, cool, like, homages and nice beam struggles. The way I sum up this episode is uh, stupid, but really cool. Which is a good way to sum up normal Dragon Ball Z, I think. <laughs> is a lot of it was stupid, but really cool. So to see that in Super, which has just been stupid lately, and not even kind of cool, it was kind of nice to see Dragon Ball Super be stupid, but pretty cool. <laughs> it's kind of the way to sum up a lot of Dragon Ball Z and most of Super. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I thought there was some, some neat character moments. I thought it was kind of a weak episode. Uh, personally but uh all right first up is the father son gallic gun that rhymes and was a cool scene because i thought it was cool that trunks went to do gallic gun because the only time trunks would have even had a chance to learn it would have been training in like the hyperbolic time chamber so i thought it was kind of cool that like he used it well and a lot of people say that it was in his time training air quotes with vegeta that they never showed us in super Okay, but I thought it was kind of implied with their time training that Vegeta sat off in the corner by himself and Trunks kept being like, can I train with you? And he kept being like, no, get out of here. Right. <laughs> so I was like, I doubt Vegeta went through like, here's the step-by-step -step process on how to do Gatling gun. Yeah, I know. First, crouch down. <laughs> you know, Vegeta just you isn't put that your hands kind of like guy, this. Right? Just have them kind of facing together outwards, bending your wrist weirdly. <laughs> or, uh, hey, Vegeta, can you, or father, can you just do a video on the phone and I'll watch the video on the phone and then I'll learn it immediately. I'm, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> that I, I could do a 10 minute episode on how that is stupid and how that breaks time and reason. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that was a really awesome scene. Uh, I I was like, oh, man, father, son, Galagun, this is awesome. Uh, and then, like, he beat Zamasu, like, two regular guys versus a uh, fuse guy who should be massively overpowered but is not apparently and apparently he should have been killed by the explosion they're like oh dang it he's our mortality which you know i see i really like the gatling gun only because it was really reminiscent to gohan beating cell you know his kamehameha and then seeing goku behind it which you know in all the games they always refer to it as the father son kamehameha exactly so i thought it was really cool for trunks to get not only like his mentor who's strongest at the time was you know gohan and strongest that he knew was like beating cell so like his mentor even as a kid strongest move that he had like now he has a variation of his own mm -hmm. and that shows like lineage and like i just i thought it was really cool because normally the only full-on like energy beam you see trunks using is usually masenko because he doesn't use the kamehameha or anything like that so First, I was like, that's where they're using Gatling gun, but that's kind of cool. And then Vegeta popped up to join him. I'm like, okay, this is really cool. Also, I like how you keep calling it Gatling gun. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, people? He doesn't care. <laughs> I'll 
call it whatever I want. I renamed a freaking character. Nobody refers to Zombie Chun as anything else but Zombie Chun anymore. <laughs> and that's just <laughs> that's trending. <laughs> that's trending. Hashtag Zombie Chun. <laughs> <laughs> I might start calling it Gatling Gun now, too. <laughs> what is it, Gatling Gun? Gallic. Gallic? Yeah, it's Gatling Gun, because I'm American. <laughs> America. <laughs> That's my reasoning why I call it Gatling Gun. So, speaking of Kamehameha's, how, yeah. was, how was that right after the double Gallic Gun? Yeah, the double Gatling Gun was Vegeta at Super Saiyan Blue and Trunks doing his weird little boosting thing. His Super Saiyan slash <laughs> Blue stage yeah, what, whatever that I'm gonna is. I'm going to call it Super Saiyan Tree Trunks. Which is instantly then, you know, kind of outdone or overshadowed. Or nullified. Nullified by Goku does the same thing by himself with just a basic Kamehameha. Like, not even, like, trying to attempt at times 10. Not even going KO Ken, which I kind of expected him to do. It was like, okay, if he goes KO Ken, that would make sense. However, the fact that it's like... It looks like he was pushing it back. Yeah, it, like, he also just defied that huge super move with just that so i thought that was pretty dumb does not make sense and is dumb and is typical because vegeta did a good thing with trunks this time and then goku comes right afterwards by himself and starts doing it well and you know they kind of show that vegeta is stronger than goku right now because he went and was in the hyperbolic time chamber and then blew it up because you know that's how vegeta decides to exit a building <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it has been shown that he's stronger by beating the crap out of Black. Yeah, so I thought it was kind of like, what? I don't... That's kind of, like, stupid that now Goku is magically able to produce the same amount of power when Vegeta had so much more on him. Right. And uh, I guess this brings us to the next point of... At the beginning of the episode, when Vegeta and Goku were blasting at Black... And Black was blasting, what was it, his purple lightning stuff or whatever? Yeah. And Goku says, like, not bad, Vegeta. You're, like, not behind or you haven't fallen or... Oh, oh yeah. The, hey, Trunks, protect my wife and your girlfriend. Because, you know, I've never shown that I cared about the Earth or other human beings at all. Except for I've done that for a long time now. So, you right. know, the fact that it's kind of to that point of, like, Goku going, hey, Vegeta, good on you for being a good person. And Vegeta I haven't just noticed instantly yet. <laughs> been like, I haven't fallen to you know from my evil ways so far that I need your attaboys. It's like, that's, <laughs> okay, that's kind of stupid. It's like, how long has Vegeta been a good guy now? He kind of showed that before when he sacrificed himself. And I thought Goku said something to him about his sacrifice against Blue mm. when he came back. Like, I, I know I'm not 100% sure, but I thought he said something about that. Like, you sacrificed yourself. For the earth that's really cool and that's when vegeta was full-on good instead of just like i'm angry and i only have a wife but now i actually care right so it was kind of like i don't what why is that line even needed like did anybody forget that vegeta used to be a bad guy like was was that like yeah, is goku just now you know as we have learned from multiple super episodes goku doesn't remember much of anything that happened within the last 10 years evidently his harsh training <laughs> and the onion fields or whatever has given to memory loss i mean now he's fallen to like i said abridged goku yeah yeah we're that's a joke and you know a mocking thing it's not that's that's not what anybody actually thinks of him okay moving on to something that i did not like in the episode was it was kind of draggy especially with the people on the stairs i was like just go up the stairs already <clears throat> And I understand they're, like, trying to be safe and trying to avoid everything, but it's just the pacing, I think, it was the issue that I had with it. Well, so, like, they showed as they're all <coughs> running out, like, one guy runs up on top and then he gets obliterated by, like, an offshoot of it, which is kind of weird because for a second you almost think, like, okay, is Zombie Chun just bored now and taking pot shots at people while fighting? Because it, do it doesn't really even kind of show that, like, oh, this is, like, one the weird lightning attack he has, like another random offshoot went ahead and just like went off to the side and then killed this guy because it hit that dude like straight on so that guy just like almost as if he aimed for him right like that dude just has like the worst luck in the world <laughs> i thought it could have shortened that a little bit and just shown more like hand-to-hand -hand fighting uh i think that would have been cool to show off how powerful zamasu has become but instead, they showed that his fusion, like, didn't really increase his power as we've seen in fusion do before as much as I thought it would. Evidently it did, because now, magically, for the first time ever since 
any of the gods have ever seen, now gods have halos. I now have halos behind me, and Supreme Kai and the other Kai are both saying, they're like, oh my god, halos! <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my god, that's never been talked about or seen before. And also, why? why? should I care? Exactly. And it doesn't make sense. Because even the ultimate god, you know, Alchon, he doesn't have them. So is that supposed to be like a thing that the Maybe other guys... Maybe Zuno or Zeno? I don't know. The king? The king yeah, yeah, god the king. I thought it was all. Something Alchon or something like uh, that. Omni king. Uh, whatever. Like, he doesn't have any halos. If you would have shown me like him with like a single like image behind him, then I would have known that dude has a halo. Zomichon has two halos. Zombie-chan must be stronger than that. Only the best ultimate Kai's get the halo thingies. No, this is a complete thing where it's like, I am ultimate god, behold my halos. And the other Kai's are just like, he has halos. Oh my god. So like halos other than when you're dead is now a thing, apparently. Yeah, just hanging out behind you. Like, you know, strike a pose, have the emblem pop up behind you. Zombie-chan now has like permanent emblem halos behind him. Dragon Ball has gone full anime slash Evangelion status with its ritual religious symbolism. So uh, speaking of Zamasu and his weird halo thing and weird stuff, what is up with this purple winged bear monkey thing? It it almost looked like Huzuru with like wings and talons and I don't know. Like a griffin? I, I'm so <laughs> confused about that, and really all of his attacks. Cause, like, they just attack, come from out of nowhere. I mean, it feels like you're fighting a guy in a fighting game. Granted, I've been playing a lot of Xenoverse lately. But literally, you're just waiting for him to do his attacks so you know what they are. So it's like, okay, he has the like spear attack, and he has like the weird lightning thing. And, and the there's, scythe. Uh, yeah. You know. Well, the, the scythe, you know, who knows if, you know, Fusion Zombie-chan has <laughs> the scythe. But so like, okay, so now he has the, the what was it, like the blood spears or whatever. I forget what they were. But the ones he, that explode? Uh, yeah, yeah, the red spears. I'm going to call them the, uh, well, they remind me of the ga- g- gun from Halo. Oh, the needlers? Yeah, the needlers. Yeah, yeah. So he has his needler attack, and then he has his, you know, force lightning attack. And then... I like the name of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's lightning force that just lightning. goes around destroying people, so. Well, if if any Jedi would do the force lightning and it's purple, it'd be Mace Windu. <laughs> So he has force lightning attack, and then, you know, he has the big ball attack that takes Vegeta and Trunks' Gatling gun to push off to the side. Or Goku. <laughs> yeah. So, and then he has the weird because. animal thing that Goku and Vegeta burst through, and he's like, what? Some purple then, cloud monster. Let me not do that again. Top five weird Zomichan moments. All right, so moving on to favorite moments. What was your favorite moment of the episode? I, I actually, I think it is the Father Son Gatling gun. Yeah. Because uh, I just thought it was really cool. Like I said, it really reminded me of Gohan Cell fight. And I thought it was cool that Trunks got his own moment for that. Because that's what he's known for is, you know, the Cell arc and the Android's arc. So the fact that he kind of got his own moment doing that, I mm-hmm. thought uh, was really cool. The yeah. fact that it was instantly downplayed, you know, as Goku does it, and the fact that it didn't even like kill him or phase him, I thought that was kind of lame. But so I thought irritating. I thought it was just like you know it was one of those like this is Dragon Ball. While I was watching that, it was this is Dragon Ball. That was probably one of my top moments in the series, probably. But my top moment for the episode was when Vegeta jumped in in front of Trunks to take that blast from Zamasu and like kind of sacrifice himself. Even though he didn't die, but or he's not dead yet. But I thought that was a nice moment. Kind of like Piccolo jumping in front of Gohan. Right. Yeah. So, in other words, our favorite moments are currently rehashing of moments from Dragon Ball Z. Very good point. (laughs) So, Dragon Ball Super, keep up the originality. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, what about... uh, (laughs) uh, Okay, least favorite moment. My least favorite moment. Okay, so there was the moment when Vegeta and Goku both go up to attack Zamatsu, like punch him in the face, mm. and Zamatsu catches them and just kind of yeah, like starts, cr- yeah, catches their fists in his hands and it just starts crushing them. 
and Vegeta and Goku just kind of stand there and take it. And I get, okay, that'd be a lot of, like, pain for them. However, that's happened before, kind of, in Dragon Ball Z. So, and normally it's followed up with, okay, now I'm going to do an energy attack with my other hand, like, to get you in the gut. Or at least or, a kick. Now, Yeah, now I'm going to kick you or something like that, you know, try to trip you up. So it was the fact that both of them got caught and then just stood there and didn't try to do anything. That, yeah. that kind of angered me. So that's probably my least favorite moment. That was a really stupid moment because all the time you're like, oh, the punch didn't work. Follow it up with an, either another punch or a kick or just follow it up. Right. Know? Just just do something. So with my least favorite moment, it's the nullifying of the father-son Gatling gun by Goku single-handedly pushing back the same attack that they both both teamed up against right both of them who were you know vegeta who was just proven is stronger than goku and trunks who with rage boosting is probably almost at that level that's that's like a whole nother thing but it's like he's it took two very strong attacks to dispel this and even then they were like you know oh my god like that took all that we had exactly yeah they were exhausted (laughs) after that and then it would have been a lot better i think if it was showed that it was at least slowly going toward Goku, and Zamasu was like taking pleasure and like, haha, right. gonna, like your your blast is like almost nothing to me, which would have added a lot of tension, I think, to it. Also, thinking about it, I guess you can kind of be nicer about it and say Vegeta and Trunks' attack at least went fully back and did damage to him, where Goku's just kind of dispelled it. Yeah. So there's almost an argument to be made for that, but at the same time, it's still, that's that's bullshit. Exactly. It, it instantly takes the coolness that just happened on screen and like, oh, okay, well, no, it's Goku, so yeah, he's that good too. And that happens entirely too much in this series, unfortunately. Hey, v- Vegeta just had some cool stuff happen while Goku had to sit there and watch. That's a that's a kind of goes back to our video on Vegeta's role in the series, which right. uh, everybody should check out. It's a great video. It is. Uh, don't, and don't forget to subscribe because there's going to be more videos in the future and thumbs up it as, as well. Oh well, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just put that put that thumb right on up there. Yeah. I mean, and if you don't like us, you know what you can do to show us: take that thumb and shove it right up our butts. Yeah. So, I mean, that thumb down, that's not going to do it. I mean, that's a downward thumb. How's that going to get up that's our That's going to, like, hit our heads. I mean, that, that doesn't <laughs> even make sense. So you hit that thumb up button, and that'll get right up our butts, and you'll show us. Yeah, it'll give us some nice pleasure. <laughs> well, we won't like it. He might like it. Well, okay, it'll give me some nice pleasure. All right, so there we go. Because I'm a freak. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, at any rate, everybody, thanks for watching, and have a good one. Bye-bye.